On Friday, the week before Thanksgiving, I was busy clearing the backlog of work off my desk. I was going to finish it by the end of the day, even if it killed me. My plan was to take a few days off next week, combining them with the holidays, and thus get nine days in a row out of the office. I'd be able to relax, sit on my ass, regroup, watch soccer, and eat turkey sandwiches without interference. Most people call me Don. My mom calls me Donald, and I don't like it, but what can you do? If they call me Donnie, it gets an angry reaction. My ex used to call me that, and it made my throat ache. I can still hear Janice's voice. Donnie, don't go. It's not what it looks like, Donnie. Please let me explain. It looked like this. She was having sex with some asshole she worked with in my bed, and she got caught. I thank my lucky stars every day that I found out before we got married. Janice and I were supposed to get married the following week, but I walked away and never looked back. The episode with Janice made me look at myself from the outside. I let her walk all over me. I put Janice on a pedestal. I tried to change for her. She changed the way I dressed. We socialized with her friends instead of mine. She told me time after time that I was too nice to people. When one of my friends asked, I always helped them. She tried to make me learn the word no, but in my world, helping my friends was the order of the day. What's the old saying? One good turn deserves another. Well, something like that. Anyway, if I need anything, my friends are there for me. They all owe me something, but I'm not one to hold it against them. At five, I filed the last folder and hurried out the door with the crowd. It had been a hectic day, and I was looking forward to having a beer at the pub across the street. My friends and I sat at the bar and relaxed with a cold beer. All in all, life wasn't bad. We played a few games of eight ball, socialized and chatted about this and that. I was walking back to the bar when Candy, one of the salesgirls, approached me with a smile. I always get chills down my spine when a salesgirl smiles at me. Candy and I have known each other since she joined the company about five years ago. I am the director of human resources and know or have at least met all of the employees. Candy and I run in different circles, but we know each other. How can I describe her? Tall? Definitely, probably at least five foot ten. Slender? Yes, but with curves in strategic places. A walking wet dream. Stylish. Like a model, correct down to the smallest detail. Pretty? Out of my league, very out of my league. Blonde? No way, Raven Black. Her hair is loose, down to her wonderful heart-shaped ass. Lesbian? What? Yeah, he has a girlfriend. She's hitting from the other side of the plate. So Candy, she's good at her job, very good. She could sell ice cubes to Eskimos. She's always on top of her department and next in line to be director of sales. Dawn, do you have a minute? I'd like to talk to you. Her voice oozed sex appeal. Oh shit, the sale is starting. Sure, Candy, you want a drink? Yes, I like beer, please, she smiled, sitting down next to me. Surprisingly, I would have said Chardonnay or Merlot. I placed my order and turned around to see where our conversation was going. So what do you want to talk about? I asked. I have a little problem and I was wondering if you could help. Now she wasn't so sure of herself anymore. I need a husband. Well, a boyfriend actually. Her voice trailed off. Okay, I'll take a bite. What's the fun in that? What is this, a candid camera? Am I being pranked? I asked, looking around the room. This really isn't a joke, Don. My parents are flying to Hawaii for vacation and will be stopping here next week to spend a couple of days with me for Thanksgiving. They want to meet my partner. And you told them you were living with a man. She lowered her eyes, afraid to look me in the eye. Why not just dress Vivian like a guy? I said sarcastically. Come on, Don, this isn't funny. If my dad finds out about me, it'll kill him. He'll have a stroke, she said. Candy, this shit sounds like a bad situation comedy. I keep seeing old reruns of I Love Lucy on here. There's no way that's going to work unless your parents are complete idiots. Why don't you just tell them the truth? Trust me, the truth will set you free, I told her. Yep, yep, I just can't, she stuttered. Tears appeared in the corners of her eyes. Wonderful, just bloody wonderful. I was in the middle of snow work and starting to feel like that Eskimo I mentioned earlier. How I wish I could cry like women do. I'd walk right into a car dealership and cry my eyes out until they gave me a new Mercedes. If I agree, and I do mean if, you're going to have to do something for me. Anything, Don, anything at all, I'd be very grateful. 
the smile returned. I want turkey and more turkey. Oh, and no giblets in the gravy. I hate giblets. Her face lit up like the sun. I think she expected me to ask for more, much more. Like something really disgusting to her, like sex with a man. You won't regret it, Dawn, I promise, she said, kissing my forehead. I doubt it very much. I'm already sorry, I said to myself. As she turned and hurried away, I called out to her. Candy, no marshmallows on the yams either. She waved back and hurried out the door. What is that word? It's right on the tip of my tongue. No, that's it. That's what I'm supposed to say? Well, so much for a peaceful, lazy week of vacation. Turkey is supposed to be delicious, freaking delicious. The next morning, I tried to sleep off the hangover. I don't usually get drunk, but after Candy left, well, you know, I realized what a mess I'd gotten myself into. I heard bells ringing, Lord, make it stop. Shit, I sat up, it was the doorbell. Who the hell could ruin my day at this hour? It wasn't noon yet. Candy? What the hell are you doing here? Candy stood on the doorstep with four large suitcases. Are you going to invite me in? She asked. I stood there in just my underwear, covering my eyes, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. It was too complicated. Screw it. I left the door open and walked back to the bedroom, scratching my ass as I went. Don, I don't want to bother you. Where are the cleaning supplies? Whispered Candy. Kitchen sink, I muttered. Fifteen minutes later, Don, do you have a broom? The door to the pantry. Five minutes. Dustbuster? Entertainment center. Two minutes. Windex? Wall safe behind the Rembrandt. It was obvious there would be no rest. I crawled into the bathroom, rummaged through my old prescription bottles, and found the old Vicodin the dentist had given me for pain. I took two pills. Fifteen minutes later, I was already mowing the lawn, my iPod running at full volume, and my smile was almost full on. I laughed to myself about doing yard work in November. So much for SoCal, I'm sure we'd have another green Christmas. Bad things were coming, really bad things. Less than a day after talking to Candy, I had a drug and alcohol problem, hell, but my yard looked good. I assumed Candy had gotten there early to clean up for my parents' arrival. I'm not a slob, but a bachelor just doesn't clean like a woman. I also figured Candy had already moved in. Judging by the size and number of bags she brought with her, she was going to be here all week. Candy was very busy. The house looked like someone else was living in it. By then, I had wiped off my hangover and the drugs had kicked in. I went into the kitchen to get a bottle of water. Candy, bent at the waist, was cleaning out the refrigerator. Her perfect ass in her short shorts was almost more than I could handle at that moment. God, what did I do to deserve this? A cold shower was what I needed right now. I needed to get my mind off Candy. Without grabbing my water bottle, I headed for my bedroom. Damn, I was being invaded. All her stuff was in my room. We'd talk about it after the shower. First, I needed to get rid of the obsession. The water was as cold as I could stand, my body frozen. I changed tactics and switched the faucet to hot. I could face the facts and get comfortable while I stroked my problem. When I heard her, I hadn't had a chance to soap up yet. Don, I'm going to run to the store. Do you need anything while I'm gone? She asked. Through the opaque glass of the shower stall, I could make out her outline in the doorway. Yeah, I could use your help with my hard stick, I wanted to say, but I didn't. No, I don't think so, is what I actually said. Don, do you mind if I pick up some new curtains for the kitchen? I hate to say it, but the ones you have now are just awful, she asked. She asked, and that was the main thing. Janice would just do it and not even think about my feelings. Yeah, go ahead, I don't mind. Oh, Dawn, by the way, you have a nice ass, she giggled. Not as cute as yours, I thought to myself. I spent the next few minutes punishing Don Jr. for acting the way he did after seeing Candy's ass. I literally beat the snot out of him, twice. It's going to be a long, hard week, and I do mean hard. By the way, I hated using Candy as a masturbatory fantasy. She wasn't a piece of meat to drool over. She just had that effect on me. It occurred to me that I should be more careful around her. When she came back from the store, her face was red as if she had been crying. Damn, could she be a mind reader too? What happened? Did I do something wrong? I asked with genuine concern. 
No, Don, it doesn't matter. You didn't do anything, she replied. Are you sure? I looked closer to see if it was my fault. It's Vivian, she whispered, before breaking down and bursting into tears and sobs. Should I run? Try to comfort her? I didn't know what to do. It was none of my business, but we were friends. Well, sort of. I did what befitted a good husband and put my arms around her. I stroked her hair. I held her until the moment passed. She looked up at me. I went back to my apartment and Vivian was already in bed with another woman. Damn her, there was never anything serious between us, but... And then the tears started. The house was fairly quiet that evening. Candy's bad experience had brought to the surface a lot of bad feelings toward Janice. I tried to keep Candy's spirits up, but it wasn't easy when you felt like crap. I went to bed early that night, but not because I was tired. It was that creepy feeling of loneliness that was plaguing me. Lying in the dark, I realized how Candy felt. Don, are you awake? Yeah, come on in, I said. I know I've already asked you a lot of things, but since most of my stuff is already here, is it okay if I stay until I find an apartment? At least for a few days, she asked. I didn't answer, there was no need. I reached out my hand to her and she took it. I pulled her to me and wrapped my arms around her. I hugged her without saying a word. Eventually, I felt her fall asleep in my arms. It was very difficult to sleep when this marvelous creature was so close. Her soft skin and wonderful smell filled my head with obscene and very vivid thoughts. I remember thinking that it would be nice to die like that, with candy in my arms. Candy woke me up early, around six, I'd say. She handed me a mug of hot coffee and sat down on the bed. I wanted to say thank you for last night, Don. I needed it more than I can explain, she said softly and sincerely. I'll be there for you anytime, Candy, I said. You've already done it. You're up pretty early, are you going somewhere? I asked, noticing she was wearing a jacket. Yeah, I've decided to take the rest of my stuff. I want to get this over with. Give me five minutes, I need to brush my teeth, I told her. Candy was surprised, but she didn't refuse my offer to help. I wanted to be there for moral support if things went badly for Vivian. She was quiet along the way and I sensed some bitterness, but not toward me. I suspected she was preparing for a confrontation. By the time we arrived, Vivian was gone. The packing went smoothly and we were ready to leave in less than an hour. Vivian arrived when the last box was loaded into my old truck. So that's it? You were going to sneak out without saying a word? said Vivian. What else is there left to say? You've made your choice, now live happily ever after, Candy said as she walked over to me and stood beside me. She reached under my arm and put her hand on my stomach. It was a very seductive gesture. Come on, Don. I see you wasted no time finding a replacement. I bet he's not as good as me. How's sex with a smelly, hairy man sound to you? The thought of it makes me sick, Vivian grumbled. Actually, it was more than I could have dreamed of. The sex was so much better than with you. Oh yeah, and the way he makes me feel like a woman. When I'm in his arms, it's so safe, I feel protected. God, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Candy ran her hand down the front of my pants. She looked up at me with her dreamy eyes from the bedroom. I felt like I was about to have a heart attack, but I played along. Viv, do yourself a favor, find a real man and get laid. Come on, honey, let's go, Candy told me. I opened the driver's door and Candy slipped inside, stopping in the middle. I barely had enough room to sit down, so close she sat. Vivian's mouth was still moving, but she didn't say a word as we drove down the street. As we rounded the corner, we both started laughing. Sorry, Don, but the opportunity was too good to pass up, she continued to giggle. Candy, you're mean. That was priceless, worth the price of admission. I'm starving, let's get something to eat. Sex always makes me hungry, she laughed. By noon, we had unloaded all of Candy's stuff. It was a hell of a morning. Candy seemed to have forgotten Vivian by now. She hummed and hummed as she continued remodeling my house. Later, we ate and watched soccer on TV. Candy seemed to enjoy the game more than I did. I didn't envision her as a sports fan. We talked for a while after the game and got to know each other on a more personal level. Candy seemed sincere and down to earth, far from what I had imagined her to be. I felt very comfortable around her and we bonded. I found myself wanting her, and not just sexually. 
Candy yawned, and we both decided it was time for bed. After taking a shower, I climbed into my bed. Candy came in, carrying a pillow. Don, I've been thinking. We're going to sleep together while mom and dad are here. Would you mind if we made a habit of it? She asked. There was a certain logic in what she said, but that didn't mean I thought it was a good idea. I imagined the lamb crawling into the lion's den, only I wasn't sure which one of us was the lion yet. Sure, I answered. I'll take a hot bath first and you go to bed, I'll join you soon. And she ran off to the adjoining bathroom. Sleep, huh? What a joke. This goddess is in my bed and I'm supposed to be sleeping like. Plus, she hadn't closed the bathroom door. Fifteen feet away from me, she was taking a bath, her naked body languishing in the hot water. I could hear her soft voice singing as she lounged in the huge tub. Torture, that's what it was. I rolled over onto my back and tried to sleep. No way in hell this was going to happen. It couldn't get any worse, or could it? Yes, when I felt her slide into bed beside me, it got worse. I was on fire as soon as I reached for her. I could already feel the heat coming from her slender body. She was ready for me to take her, but no, that would be inappropriate. This wasn't what she wanted, or did she? Maybe she was subtly offering herself to me? Damn, I was going crazy. As you've probably guessed by now, the whole night turned into a slow-burning, endless hell. I could have so easily, but I didn't. I wanted to so badly, but I didn't. She trusted me unconditionally, but she shouldn't have. In the end, I couldn't. But you can rest assured that I was thinking about that, and nothing else. The next morning, Candy told me she had never slept so well. I didn't bother to tell her that I had slept like an insomniac on a church bell tower. I wasn't sure I could take another five days like that. The lack of sleep was wearing me down, and it was getting harder and harder to be around Candy. That afternoon, I did something I swore I'd never do for the world. I cleaned out my garage. It was hard, dirty work, but it was something I could do with a little brain power. And I didn't have a hell of a lot of it left. A sleepless night spent pining for Candy made me question her feelings for me. How could she be interested in a low life like me? I spent all day cleaning and rearranging. When I got back to the house in the evening, I was like a zombie. The house smelled wonderful. Candy must be cooking in the kitchen. I immediately headed for the bedroom. A shower was definitely needed. A hot shower and then I planned to jump into bed. With any luck, I'd be asleep before Candy even realized I was in the house. My sorry ass dragged behind me as I undressed in my dressing room. Without thinking, I headed to the bathroom, peed, jumped in the shower, and almost fell asleep under the running water. As I dried myself off, I thought about how great it would be to get some sleep. Dinner's in the oven, I heard Candy say. God, I realized too late that she was in the tub and had been there since I walked in. It was unreal, me standing there, naked, watching. How could I not have noticed? I was too stunned to even try to cover myself, and why would I do that now? I stood there for at least ten minutes. Candy didn't seem the least bit embarrassed. I tried to act calm until I realized that Don Jr. had noticed Candy's beautiful body soaking in the tub. Another beautiful mess, why God, why? Screw it, what's done is done. I didn't bother apologizing after all. She could have said something sooner or at least closed the door. Candy got up out of the water and got out of the tub. My life was getting weirder by the minute. Candy took my towel and started to dry herself off. You must be tired. You've been on your feet all day. Go to bed and I'll get you something to eat, she said. So I did. I was too exhausted to argue and didn't even bother with clothes. Candy brought two plates and we ate in bed. Luckily, she had a robe on. As she took the empty plates to the kitchen, I thought that after only two days together, we had somehow already turned into an old married couple. We're comfortable with each other, but there's no sex. No sex was what I dreamed of when I woke up, a life without sex. There was one problem, though. Candy was snuggled up against my back. It was still dark. The alarm clock read 345. I could feel that she was wearing the same sleep garment I was wearing. None. Her arm was resting on me, and Don Jr. was reaching for her hand. Candy attracted me like no one before her. Her sexual orientation confused me. She had to know what she was doing, didn't she? I began to wonder how damn stupid I was. Did she really trust me that much? Maybe she was being modest? Maybe I should have made the first move? Gathering all my willpower, I pushed those thoughts away and went back to sleep. Little Don woke up before I did, and Candy had her arms around his neck. When I realized what was happening, I slipped out of bed. What a stupid thing to do, you thought. 
Maybe, but I wanted Candy to at least be awake during our first sexual encounter. I wanted neither party to be wrong. We both had to know exactly what was going on. While Candy slept, I reflected on how things were going. Tonight was going to be crucial. One way or another, I would make my intentions clear to her. Today was Tuesday. Her parents would be arriving tomorrow. She would be busy with them and I would be like the fourth wheel on a tricycle. If she wasn't interested in me, I'd better find out before they arrived. We spent almost two hours at the supermarket and Candy told me that she needed to start getting ready for the Thanksgiving feast. She had pies to bake and she'd be busy all day. I agreed to help but stayed out of the kitchen. My day was spent running around the market for things we'd forgotten. Candy had worked hard in the kitchen and when she finally sat down, she was clearly tired. I offered to massage her sore back and she gladly accepted. As my fingers worked their magic, Candy visibly relaxed. She guided me to the knotted muscles. A little to the left, ooh, lower, mum. That feels so good, she cooed. I was just about to ask what else I could do to relieve her tension when the phone rang. The freaking phone. What bad timing. It was Candy's cell phone. If it had been mine, I would have ignored it. Who do you think ruined the moment? It was Candy's mom. They had caught an early flight and were arriving late at night. Candy was excited, and we spent a couple hours trying to figure out our stories. How long had we been together? When was the wedding? What would the children's names be? There was no way in hell that was going to happen. I could feel a divorce coming, and we weren't even married. We got back from the airport at 11. Everyone was chatting and picking up the conversation. I tried to keep the conversation going without putting my foot in my mouth. Candy was sitting very close to me. We were playing the loving couple. The hugs and kisses were driving me crazy, but I tried not to show it too much. Candy's father, Ben, interrupted the conversation around one o'clock. He said he was going to bed. I followed his example and left Candy and her mom, Cynthia, to talk some more. I felt the time was wrong to suggest anything tonight. That feeling was confirmed when Candy slid into bed in a don't touch me flannel nightgown. Don Jr. wasn't impressed and let me sleep on it. Wednesday morning, I found Ben had opened my plasma TV and was watching an old war movie from my DVD collection. Candy and Cynthia were busy in the kitchen, so I poured coffee and went to wash the cars. Have you ever had the feeling that something beautiful is almost at your fingertips, but you reach out and it slips through your fingers? I couldn't figure out how I could know how Candy felt about me when her parents were around. By the time the cars were done with, I had worked up an appetite. Inside, I found Ben yelling at the TV screen, trying to warn John Wayne of the impending doom of the Navy at Pearl Harbor. For God's sake, get out of there, you're all going to die, he shouted, as if he could change the course of history. I waved that image away and headed for the kitchen, hoping to find a sandwich. Candy and Cynthia were chatting about something, but stopped abruptly when they saw me. It's hard to ignore paranoia when something like this happens. Candy looked embarrassed and Cynthia was smiling at me. I couldn't tell if it was a genuine smile or one of those, look, here comes the dumbass smiles. Something was definitely going on, but what? Surprisingly, Candy read my mind and handed me a huge BLT sandwich. Cynthia took one to Ben, leaving Candy and me alone for the first time since morning. In between bites, I asked, do they buy it? Candy had a funny look that I couldn't read. Daddy didn't get it. He really likes you. He said he likes everyone with so many John Wayne movies, she whispered. She pulled me close just as I took another bite. Her eyes closed, and she leaned in and kissed me so hard I almost choked. I wiped the mayonnaise off the corner of her mouth as she murmured, thank you, and then took a big bite out of my BLT. Cynthia walked into the kitchen and caught almost all of our exchange. Trying not to sound too nice, I asked. Do you want one too? I asked, offering her my sandwich. Yeah, I wouldn't mind, she said walked past the outstretched BLT and kissed me right on the lips. Jesus Christ, Cynthia, what about Ben? I whispered loudly. What about him? He has his own sandwich and I highly doubt he wants to kiss you, she laughed. I was starting to feel like the whole family was a little out of sorts and I was the worst of the bunch. Candy's gut was about to burst and it was pretty funny when you think about it. The rest of the day passed without any new stupidity on my part. Ben decided to call it a day he was exhausted from so much activity. He put out a bunch of oil well fires and drove a few rhinos with Duke. I had no idea how tonight was going to turn out. I decided to just take it as it came. Candy was giving mixed signals with her sleep clothes. 
It wasn't a flannel nightgown, but it wasn't nude either. It was short, lacy, but not too see-through. I stroked her shoulders, and her body language told me I was on the right track. I tried not to pay too much attention to it. I would continue the friendly massage and see what happened next. Does it feel good? I asked. Very good, please don't stop, she purred. Let me get the lotion, I told her and went into the bathroom. When I returned, she had already taken off her nightie and was stretched out on her stomach. I warmed the lotion in my hands and gently spread it over her smooth skin. I started with the muscles of her upper back, rubbing and kneading them. Candy moaned and grunted. With my fingers, I pressed on the muscles near her spine. My thumbs penetrated deep into the tissue, making her moan with pleasure. I applied more lotion to my hands as I continued down to her lower back. Oh God, yes, right here. I'm in heaven she whispered. My hands found a rhythm, and even with the lotion, I could feel her skin heating up from the friction. I continued my attack on her lower back. Candy was now completely relaxed. She didn't flinch when I removed the panties from her delightful ass. I replenished the lotion on my hands and determinedly began to rub it into her soft skin. My thumbs dug deep into her tired muscles as I caressed every inch of her skin. I expected her to tense up as my fingers penetrated deep into the slit of her lovely ass. She purred like a kitten. Candy wiggled her hips faintly as my hands gently probed the inside of her thighs. My fingers ran carelessly over her labia, causing her legs to spread slightly. There was no doubt that she was aroused, but I took my time. My hands moved away, and I began kneading the muscles in her legs. My hands massaged her feet and her toes flexed and unbent. Candy rolled over onto her back to watch me fulfill her needs. I kissed her big toe as I finished with her right foot and took up her left. She giggled and smiled. I took the same amount of time on her other leg and moved on to her shins and knees. I was starting to get a little worried, weren't you? The pressure to get it right was immense. How was I going to be as good, if not better than her mistresses? I doubted my abilities as a male. If I didn't stop thinking about this nonsense, I'd talk myself out of what I wanted most. It had taken me almost an hour to get to this point. Candy's legs were spread wide, giving me full access. I heard a deep moan and a sound like a muffled scream. I looked up at Candy, she looked back questioningly. It wasn't coming from her. When we heard the banging of the headboard of the bed against the wall in the guest bedroom, we immediately realized the source of the scream. Candy stared in horror at what was happening at her headboard. She wrapped a pillow around her head, trying to muffle the noise. Don, stop it, she pleaded. How, I replied. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing, she almost cried. She sat with her knees pressed tightly to her chest. It occurred to me to stop by Candy's parents' house with a screwdriver and a wrench. How would they react if I was tightening the bolts on the bed while they were unscrewing the screws in the room? I quickly dismissed the thought. Gritting her teeth like it was my fault, Candy growled, Do something, Don! And I did the only sensible thing I could think of. I pulled Candy out of the fetal embrace and kissed her. I kissed her hard in a way that took her breath away. For those few seconds, it was possible to ignore the pounding of the bed. I kissed her again, and this time she returned the kiss. Now she was the aggressor and was greedily kissing my neck. This was not slow, passionate lovemaking, but greedy animal sex. Things were going very differently than I had envisioned our first time together. I felt her sink her teeth into my neck. Our sweaty bodies pressed against each other and Candy cupped her palms around my face and showered my eyelids with small kisses. I didn't do you any honor when I teased Viv the other day. My first time with a man, it was amazing, she cooed. Well, I had to do something to distract you from that damn sex, I joked. What the hell? She giggled. Quickly changing the subject, honey? Hmm? I'm hungry, would you like something? Stay where you are, I'll fix something. I was standing at the stove toasting French toast when I felt hands run down my bare chest. I looked over my shoulder, expecting to see candy. Mmm, that smells delicious. Can I have some? Cynthia asked. Sure, I replied, praying to God that she meant the toast. I moved back to grab a plate from the cabinet, trying to get Cynthia's hands off me. Cynthia is a very attractive woman, and under other circumstances, I would have been very happy to have her by my side. You can all see the position I was in. She was wearing a transparent kimono, and even in the dim light, I could see almost every feature of her beautiful body beneath the silk. 
Trying to remain calm, I set her plate down and returned to the pan to make more. Looks like Candy has adopted more than one family trait from me, she said cryptically. Mmm, this is delicious. I took the bait. So what's it going to be? She's quite, shall we say, perky during sex. Well, as a mother goes, so goes the daughter, I prompted. Oh, did you hear that? She said without raising her eyes. How could you miss? I smirked. Honestly, Don, I was wondering how long this was going to go on. Candy was almost throwing herself at you. She told me she was wondering if she'd have to rape you. I looked at her in amazement. Really? I got the feeling I was being set up. So I take it you know all about her and me. Am I the only one who doesn't get the joke? What has to happen now, Mom? Am I supposed to take you back to my bed? Are we going to have a threesome? I was starting to get angry. Is that what you want? Do you want me? She asked. No, I really don't know. And where the hell is Ben in all this? I guess he likes to watch, doesn't he? Whoa, Don, you've got it all mixed up. As far as Ben is concerned, you're his future son-in-law. He knows nothing about Candy's lifestyle choices. It was done for his benefit. So you've been in on this from the beginning? I asked. I was starting to get worried about being led around like I had a nose ring in my nose. Cynthia seemed to know too much about our arrangement. No, Don, I wasn't. I knew about Candy's sexual preference, but until today, I just hoped she had put it out of her mind and you and her were for real. Don, I'm a caring mother. I want grandchildren. At this rate, there was very little chance of that happening. So why did she tell you about us? She was confused. She had never felt this way about a man before. She was afraid you wouldn't respond to her. Don, Candy fell in love with you. She told me about how wonderful you treated her. She wanted advice from her mother. That doesn't even come close to explaining why you were hitting on me. It was a simple test, Don. Now that you've made my girl a woman, I wanted to see if you just craved a piece of ass. It was probably stupid of me, but it made me realize what I needed to know about you as a man. And what's it going to be? She was right about you. You are the real deal. Don, she's my baby. I only want the best for her. By then, I had set the French toast on fire. While I was hastily preparing a new batch, Cynthia finished eating. I pondered what she had done and told me. None of it made sense, but female logic confused me. Candy had fallen in love with me, just imagine. She was throwing herself at me, only I was too afraid of making the wrong move to act. Now that you realize it was all a sham, don't you think maybe we're all rushing things? I asked. It could be Don, but sometimes when the chemistry is just perfect, it's all it takes is one heartbeat to realize it, she said. Cynthia, may I ask you one last thing? Sure, Han, shoot. What would you do if I was like all these guys? How far would you go? That's a tough question. You look good. Maybe I would. Maybe I wouldn't. One thing is for sure, you'll never know for sure, she said with a wink. She walked over to me and we hugged, the way my mother would have hugged me. As she walked away, I'm sure she was swinging her ass around more than usual. This woman had just straightened me out. I was glad she liked me. But damn, with an enemy of this caliber, suicide might be the wisest choice. Candy was a little annoyed when I got back. Who needs 45 minutes to make French toast? I'm not hungry, she pouted. I set the plate down next to her. But you'll be there in five minutes, I said, getting between her legs and running my tongue along her slit. In three minutes and 20 seconds. Mmm, this toast is perfect. No wonder it took so long to prepare. When Candy fell asleep, I stared at the ceiling, wondering if Cynthia was right. Could we really have fallen in love in such a short time? I thought about it until I finally succumbed to sleep. Had I gotten my answer? On Thanksgiving morning, Candy and I showered together. We became even more familiar with each other's bodies as the hot water poured over us. Candy, I had a long talk with your mom in the kitchen last night, I said. She had a concerned look on her face. Don, I can explain. Your mom already did that. She looked really scared. Fearing the worst, ask, what did she say? She said a lot of things, but the main thing I realized last night was that we were both keeping secrets from each other. This is all going to end right now, and I'm just going to say it. Candy, I'm in love with you. What? 
I think I have soap in my ears. You just said... For a moment, I wondered if Cynthia was pulling my chain. I said I love you, Candy, I promised myself. I didn't have to wonder for long if I'd done the right thing. Candy jumped up from the floor and wrapped her arms and legs around me. Her kiss said a lot about her feelings for me. She broke the kiss. I love you too, she said with tears in her eyes. Ben was glued to the television. He and John were still trying to win World War II. Pouring her morning coffee, Cynthia smiled. How are you this morning, Donald? Just fine, Mom, I replied. It made her laugh. But it scared me a little that she was calling me Donald, something only my mother could get away with. Candy came in a few seconds later and kissed me so hard I almost fell to my knees. She hugged Cynthia tightly and whispered something in her ear. They both smiled. I couldn't be happier, Cynthia said. The bird is already in the oven. You two should find something to do for a few hours. Candy quickly oriented herself, grabbed my hand, and hurried into the bedroom. We spent the next few hours in bed watching a great soccer game on TV. The table was set for a sumptuous feast. It was a shame to carve the perfectly browned turkey. No. Everything looked so appetizing I could hardly wait. I chatted with the girls, enjoying our Thanksgiving dinner. Ben was focused on his food and didn't seem to be paying attention to the chatter. I think he was trying to go back and see what was going on at Fort Apache. Out of the blue, Candy said, I love you, Don. She said it softly, and the look she gave me melted my heart. Then from the farthest and most distant part of left field, Ben, without raising his eyes or taking his eyes off the potatoes, said, Candy, does this mean you're no longer a lesbian? The silence was like a sonic boom. The girls stared at him with open mouths. Ben, said Cynthia in surprise. At the same time, Candy screamed, Daddy! Without missing a beat, Ben said, What? That's a valid question, he shrugged. The deed was done and we were all escorted out. I honestly can't remember when I've laughed so hard. Ben was looking right at me and he had the biggest grin I'd ever seen. Pay attention, son. You need to learn something if you want to survive in marriage, he told me. Without another word, he sank back into his plate. Candy and her mother finally got the humor. I swore before God that if I lived to be a hundred years old, I would remember this meal every time I sat down at this table. Candy came to our bed. I made love to her, but it wasn't spontaneous sex like the night before. We took our time. She touched parts of my soul that she had never used before. I worshipped her with a passion I had never shown to anyone else. The thumping of the headboard of the bed in the next room was almost imperceptible. The next morning, as the cab pulled up, we said goodbye to Ben and Cynthia. I promised Ben that I would have a fresh pack of DVDs for their Christmas visit. It's been one hell of a week. I missed a few soccer games I had planned. But it did pay unexpected dividends, a sweet tooth. Yeah, that's what I said. A sweet tooth that only candy can satisfy.